YouTubers. Want to tell the people while we're here? Yes, yeah, so she's sitting on my subwoofer, and it is a 15-inch Rhythmic, 400 watt, and it's a servo sub. And how did I choose that sub? Well, that's what we're here to talk about. Zeos, I have these speakers on my desk, and I have this much budget, what subwoofer? Nay, nay. You're doing it wrong. Let me explain how subwoofer choosing works. This is what picks the subwoofer. The room. Unlike a speaker, where it's on your desk or in your room, and you have to just get in front of it, and that's where it hits you, a subwoofer does omnidirectional things. It makes the boom go throughout. I have nine foot ceilings here. This room is 15 feet deep and 18 and a half feet wide with a massive opening. That means if it tries to make bass and it's a tiny little subwoofer, it's going to lose it. It literally can't vibrate the air enough. So no matter if you're on a desk or in a bathroom or in a garage, it doesn't matter what your intended purpose is for this subwoofer. Your subwoofer needs to be chosen based on the room it's going to sit in. And in my case, this is a very large space. Uh, I'd probably tell people they needed two subwoofers, but you know, that isn't always, oh wait, yeah, I have two other subwoofers there. So this is what I'm saying. If you're gonna come to me and ask me subwoofer advice, come to me with the room size and then the intended purpose. There's a difference between uh, music and movies. Uh, these two Infinity subwoofers are 10 inch front firing with side passive radiators, dual. And I've got them running off a of power amp and I put about 500 watts each and those are specifically for music. They will not do the extremely low Hertz ratings of like 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. I think that does 13 Hertz. So that's fine for music. Music usually doesn't go down to below 20 with any sort of real fidelity. Maybe there'll be a song that's like bass test bro and it just fucks shit up. That's not what I'm talking about. You want music, you can usually go for a smaller, lighter, faster sub. I'm gonna do the faster thing because that's a 15 inch driver. It's yay big. And if you're trying to reproduce something like an instrument would do, like a cello, that's a resonant frequency that's usually gonna be a little bit faster than that can make go. That's why when you get a you know a mid-range driver or a, a bass driver on a speaker, it's much smaller because it can move much faster, much more precisely. So with music, if your concern is only music and you're not a crazy bass head, because preference also comes into this scenario, if you are a crazy bass head, ignore everything I'm saying in this video, just get them, take all your money and just shovel it into a machine that produces SVS and rhythmic subwoofers. Because I want PSA, I want Velodyne, do, 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 because that's, what you're, that, that's the only thing that will satisfy you. If you're a little bit more normal, this video should help a bit. Zeos, I have a desk. I want to play music, and my room is yay big. 10 inches is about the, the minimum. There's 8-inch subwoofers out there. Very, very rarely will I recommend an 8-inch sub. There's just, they don't fit the profile. They don't move enough air. I mean, this is a six and a half. So an eight's only slightly bigger than that. And then depending on the design of the box, maybe you could produce like my bathroom could probably use an eight inch subwoofer. Tens where it starts. Micah makes a 10, Dayton makes a 10. Uh, who else makes a 10? Martin Logan used to make a really good 10. And then you move up to the norm. I'm going to say the most average size subwoofer is a 12 inch. Giggity. Uh, also, Micah, Dayton, uh, the uh, Bic F12, all linked in the description. Those are all 12 inch and those are good starting points. Now, I'm a believer in two subwoofers for music because it's just a balancing. Let me explain. Let me get off track again. If you've never been to Z Reviews, by the way, this is all just consciousness flowing and God knows you're in for a trip because it's one in the morning. 
Have you ever heard of the sub crawl? In the description of this video will be linked a very old video of mine where I do the sub crawl. Um, I had a friend who just was talking to me who'd never heard of it before. And it's the basic concept that if you put a subwoofer in your room, sometimes when you're where you want to sit, it doesn't sound very good. You don't get a lot of bass. Like, why isn't it working? And what you do is, there, there's this weird property that if you take your subwoofer that you've purchased and you put it either in the chair or move the chair and put a table and put it up on the table, if you put the subwoofer right here where you want it to sound the best when you're sitting and then crawl around on all floor, fours like a dog or cat or a cute little hopping bunny around your room, at some point the bass will go, well, there's no bass there, or it's way too boomy bass there, Oh, the bass is really good right there. And then it's not good. You find the opposite point at which the bass sounds good. It sounds like I'm pranking you. It sounds like I'm going to fucking... Uh, Haha, you've been punked. But it's not. It's a real thing. Subwoofer goes where you sit. As close to where your head position is as possible. I know when I did it, I did it with like a 100 pound sub and it was hilarious. And then you crawl around on all fours, and I think there was two spots. That spot, two feet off the ground, sounded absolutely perfect. And here's the thing, no computer can calculate where your subwoofer is gonna sound best, because every crack and crevice and angle and absorption and reverb all affects where subwoofer placement is gonna work. So I determined from that spot there Right where Chewbacca is, is actually the best spot. On the floor is not the best spot. If I put that subwoofer up another foot, I'd probably be ideal. The only other place it might have worked was like here, which is less convenient actually. But it still sounded best over there. So that means you do that to find the best placement spot for a subwoofer. Now, if you've already got a subwoofer, that's easy. You just get a long enough cable, get an extension cord, plug it, play it, pick. If you want to do two subs, if you already have a subwoofer, you can add another subwoofer. Usually any surround receiver, if we're talking about now surround sound, the 0.1 output, you can just get a Y splitter and run two subs. You don't need a 5.2 or 7.2 specific receiver. Most of those don't even take advantage of having two outputs and then modify them separately. They just have an internal splitter. So you can run two subs. Uh, some people will just stack them one on top of the other. Other times you do the sub crawl and you put a sub in the best spot and you put a sub in the second best spot. Uh, I cannot guarantee you that where the best spot is on the floor for your subwoofer will be a place you will actually put it. Sometimes it's right in front of a doorway. Sometimes it's four feet away from a wall in the middle of the room. That's just sound. Sound, sound once what the sound wants. Anyway, back to buying, back to music, back to movies. With movies, if you're using it as a point one, depending on how robust your front channels are, um, as how much work the subwoofer is going to have to do. If you get very, very tiny speakers, and the subwoofer has to do more to sort of compensate. And the more the subwoofer has to do, the higher the hertz or the frequency that it's going to have to produce. Instead of just producing the massive low end, it's now got to produce, you know, 100 hertz and 110 hertz maybe, which is locatable. When you sit down, if you have a good subwoofer, you close your eyes and you hear, you hear like, I don't know, let me see, do I have anything that I could... Do I have an example of something that could make sound go? Chewbacca's head nearly just twisted off. Um, Captain America, Winter Soldier. You have something like this, and you close your eyes. I don't know where my subwoofer is. There's just a base. If you can hear where your subwoofer is, it's probably up a little bit too high. So we're just doing general rules of subwoofer for now, which is good. This is good stuff, right, Chewbacca? You want to watch more of Captain Rogers? Do I have space on this? Play. I'm sorry, baby. You go sleep. 
You go sleep now. I just, it's fun to hit play on this. Good. All right, let's see. We talked about placement. Placement is do the sub crawl. Uh, with these front subs, I obviously didn't do the sub crawl. I just put them here. Having two of them helps because even though they're not in the ideal position, since there are two of them, it's just evening out the the influx of, of what's the word I'm looking for? Airflow? No. Air fuckery? No, probably not that either. Two, you can get away with uh, dual subs in sort of like off positions because there's just so much movement of air where one would just be limited. If you're doing movies and you need as low as possible, which is a thing, by the way, you know, Captain Rogers, there's an explosion, gunfire, all that jazz. You're not really looking to get like musical tonality going on. You just want that gun to make explodey noises and make boom boom. So you can get away with just a giant honking sub. When you go for music and you need a little more fidelity, uh, you either, I, I tend to tell people they gotta spend a little more money. It, it's weird because with music, you tend to need a smaller sub than, mu than movies, but at the same time, the more expensive a sub is, usually the better it is at controlling it. Um, one of the things that higher wattage does for a subwoofer, like the Mica sub, is like 120 watts peak. And that's fine. It's a 12 inch. Oh, it's great. But you can go to SVS and they have like seven, 800 watts peak for the same size driver. When you're like Zeos, what's the difference? The difference is not that the 120 inch, 120 watt can push it less. They could both push out to the same extreme, both those amplifiers. The difference is the more powerful subwoofer amp can change directions faster. So if the mic is being told to do this and then all of a sudden it's being told to do like, like, oh, stop and then change the frequency with only a hundred, it's like driving around a 4,000 pound car with a hundred horsepower and bad brakes. You can eventually get it up to 60 miles an hour and eventually stop, but you don't have much say in when that happens. It's sort of like nail the gas and wait. Oh shit, nail the brakes and wait where a thousand horsepower and like jet brakes is like, uh, 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 you can control it better. What you need for music is control. What you need for bass basically is control. You can get away with like a cheap, like Bic F12 or the Mica or the Dayton just for big boomy explosions, who cares? And you, you tend to notice when you start spending a little bit more on a subwoofer, especially something like a servo sub like this Rhythmic is, where it actually has meters in it to report the position of the driver and it can increase or decrease the power to get it where it wants it to be, even though that's not how a normal amplifier would work. It's, it's very, very cool and expensive. That's $900 that sub. So it's like, be here, then be here, then be here. What was I talking about? This is a very informative video. You, you, you will love this video. Music smaller faster or bigger more powerful both work movies smaller you lose that real low rumble most movies are looking for extreme lows so i'm always going to tell you get the biggest sub you can get the fucking biggest 12s 15s do it 215s do it the main point of this video though was don't ask me what subwoofer you need for your speakers Ask me what subwoofer you need for your room. Sometimes big subwoofers are what you need. Room this size, I need a 15, period. I've hooked up 12s, they've made bass happen, and I'm satisfied. I'm not looking to be satisfied, I'm looking to be impressed. That will not happen if you place the subwoofer wrong or under underfill a room with a sub. Now, in my case, it's a little bit special because I have the fronts, which are actually part of the front channel array, so that for music, the towers or whatever, and then these come in, fill it in. That does not play for music. For movies, all three play um, with those out of phase, so it doesn't affect that. 
We could get into phase issues if you really want to, room modes, which is really what the the uh, subwoofer crawl is, does. It helps you find room modes where the, the waves that come out of the sub, you know, will hit that corner and then the waves are still coming out and they'll sort of, either if they do this, they make it way boomy, but if they're doing this, they'll just peter out and there'll be no sound there. It's very strange. No one really understands how sound works. You can map it all you want, but until you're there and you're listening, eh. So, I don't know if I've helped anybody out with this video. This is, this is one of those videos I'm doing just because people keep asking me, what subwoofer should I get with Mike MB42Xs on my desk? How big is your room? How big is your room? Because you don't fill your ears with sound, you fill the room with bass. If you want to talk about how to isolate a room from your neighbors, you don't. You move. Those those pads you put the speak the subwoofer on sort of work if vibration is the problem. But most of the time it's the actual pressure of the sub shaking the floors and walls and not just the actual physical vibration of the subwoofer. So you're sort of shit out of luck. Anyway, I'm Zeos Pantera. This is Z Reviews. I've been ranting for 23 minutes. Yes, am I close? Uh, if you want to support these rants, and I have them many times, I have a Patreon, which allows you to ask me questions directly, either via, if you do $5 a month, it's through the messaging system and Patreon, which mostly sucks. If it's $10 a month, there's a secret Patreon chat which has over 150 people in it that just bother me all day and I'm glad to go and help them with all their problems and give away reviews early and opinions early. They don't have to wait for nothing. Uh, there's also yard sales. If I do get a subwoofer or a pair of speakers, that pair of speakers, and you wanna buy them. Is Chewbacca okay? That's Chewbacca, by the way. She's a girl, Chewbacca the girl. She was this big when I named her. She was like, the size of a hamster. I was like, ah, it looks like Chewbacca. And it turned out to be a girl. Anyway, enough of that story. Patreon, $5 tier, yard sales, $10 tier, chat. The wallpaper will be in the description, as it is in every Z Reviews, because God knows y'all need some good wallpapers. Are you gonna cough up a hairball on my sub review? My sub placement video. Get it up. Get it on up. She'll be fine, everybody. Anywho, thank you for stopping by. I hope you weren't too bored with me just gabbing on about big rooms, big subs, big money. Yeah. Peace.